All right, today we're going to be talking about the properties of polygons. If you'll recall, we already talked about polygons way back in one of the beginning chapters of this book, okay? And so polygons, for us, were really just things, shapes, made up of segments that join end to end. And so what I have here is I have drawn a polygon, okay? And this happens to be a quadrilateral because it has four sides. And part of what we're going to discuss is what exactly are the pieces of this polygon, okay? And so for reference sake, here we go. This right here is a vertex, a corner, okay? This one has four of them. When we talk about the next part, what we're going to do is something like this. And this line here, though it is crooked, is called a diagonal. Okay, that's called a diagonal. And these over here, we get a different, different color, obviously called sides. Okay, so we have diagonals which join from corner to corner and sides which go around the outside and are joined at vertex, at a vertex or vertices. Okay, let's look at what we call these things. The name of the polygon with three sides would be a triangle. Okay, so that's a triangle. If it's got four sides, it's called a quadrilateral. Okay, five sides. A pentagon. If it has six sides, you've probably heard this one before. It's called a hexagon. Seven sides is going to be called a heptagon. Okay. Eight, more commonly known as a stop sign, is called an octagon. Okay. Nine is going to be called a nonagon. Now be careful with this. The nonagon is different than what we're going to talk about in just a few lines. So this is a nonagon. Okay. Ten is a decagon. So think decade. Okay. Decade has ten years. Decagon has ten sides. Okay. Twelve sided is going to be a dodecagon. As we progress down the line, there are shapes that have 11 sides, and 13, and 14, and 15, and 20, and 100 sides. What we do to talk about the general name, so n is some number of sides. We don't necessarily know what it is. It's some number, but we're going to call it some number of sides. It's called an n-gon. So, for example, we might call it a 15-gon. It has 15 sides. Okay, so you could have an 86-gon. That would be an 86-sided figure. But a 15-gon has 15 sides. Okay? In example one, we're going to talk about what a polygon is and what a polygon is not. A polygon, remember, is straight sides and it's closed. Okay, so this here is a polygon. And we can tell that it has one, two, three, four, five sides. So we would call it a pentagon. Okay. Another attribute of polygons is they have segments. Joined end to end. And so because this overlaps, this is not a polygon. 
Okay, it's not a polygon because it overlaps. Okay, this last one is not a polygon either because it is not closed. The reason for this one was it is not joined end to end. Okay. All right, so moving down this way, we need to talk about the concept of a regular polygon. A regular polygon is congruent sides and angles. And so this is the way that it would be marked. I would mark each of the sides as congruent. And I would show that using these tick marks like we've done throughout to show that things are congruent. Okay, so that's how we show that the sides are congruent. To show that the angles are congruent, I'm going to mark them with an arc. And so you'll see that these regular polygons really actually look sort of funny. They're kind of marked up. They look like they've got some sort of, I don't know, design on them. Okay. And so that's a, a regular polygon is congruent sides and congruent angles. Okay, concave. A concave polygon has diagonals that kind of go everywhere. You see, I think of it like it's got these little caves, these little in-croppings here. And so the diagonals connect across the exterior. If I'm going to draw in one of these diagonals that connects a corner to a corner, you see this goes across the exterior. If I try to connect these two corners here, it goes on the outside. Notice, on the inside here when it's convex, all of the diagonals connect on the inside. You see? None of them go to the outside. They all go to the inside. So a convex, a convex polygon has no diagonals on the outside. They're all interior. Okay. When we go down below here, we have examples of regular and irregular polygons. Well, what I'm going to say is here, I notice that this little side here is different from this side here. So I'm going to call this irregular and concave because it has these little caves on the outside, these little caved in spots that need to be filled in. Okay. Likewise, this one is concave. And this one would be convex. Now, are they regular or not? Well, this one has all of its sides the same. So this is a regular convex polygon. This one has sides of different lengths. You see? So it's going to be irregular. Now, according to the sides on this middle one, it is regular. But what about the angles? Because I'm marking them regular, I'm going to say that they're regular, okay, because this is supposed to be a box on its side. It got a little bit tilted when I converted it over, but because I've marked the sides, it's going to be regular, okay? But these are all different angles, so they're not going to be regular, okay? So that's regular and irregular. Regular means all the same, all the same. Now, let's talk about angle sums for a minute. The interior angles of a triangle, we learned, all add up to 180 degrees. And so when I have this chart here, which continues down the page, the chart here tells us, and actually I'm going to zoom out so we can see a little bit more of this chart, okay? Because we can obviously see those shapes. So we have the shape triangle. 
it has three sides. Well, the number of triangles in it is 1, so the sum of the interior angles we already know to be 180. Okay, let's consider this for a minute. This is a quadrilateral, so it has four sides. I'm going to use diagonals to divide it. Watch me very carefully here. Okay, so I'm going to divide it in half. So I have one, two triangles. Well, that means that I have a total of 360 degrees, or 2 times 180 equals 360, okay? When I move down this way, I'm going to connect it to make triangles that do not overlap. That's the key. I started out at one corner, all right? So I have one, two, three triangles on the inside. So the number of sides is five. The number of triangles is three. So I'd have three times 180 is going to be equal to 540. All right. Let's try this one. We'll start from this corner here and we're going to connect each vertex using a diagonal. And if I label all of these triangles, I notice that I have six sides, four triangles. So four times 180 is equal to 400 and then 320 would be 720 degrees. Now, what about an n-gon? The number of sides that it has is going to be indicated by the n. So it has n number of sides. If we look at the pattern that we've been developing, if we have three sides, we have one triangle. If we have four sides, we have two. If we have five, we have three. If we have six, we have four. So the pattern seems to be minus two, minus two, minus two, and minus two. So if we're trying to come up with a general formula to figure out how many degrees are in an n-gon, if it has n sides, to find out the number of triangles, we're going to take away two. And that gives us n minus two. Well, what we did then was we took that answer and multiplied it times 180 because each triangle has 180 degrees in it. So I take the number of triangles, n minus 2, and multiply it by 180 to get the total number of degrees in an n-gon. And that's our theorem. The polygon angle sum theorem says the number of degrees in an n-gon is n minus 2 times 180. Okay? This is going to allow us to do some very, very cool things. Okay? Because we're going to be able to find the sum of the interior angles of various kinds of polygons. Okay? So now, we're going to find the sum of the interior angles of a convex, excuse me, of a convex octagon. So an octagon has eight sides. So I know my formula is n minus 2 times 180. So n equals 8 because it's an 8-gon. It's an octagon. So I have 8 minus 2 times 180 is equal to 6 times 180. So that's going to be equal to 1,080 degrees. Okay. What about a nonagon? A nonagon, n is going to equal 9. So we have 9 minus 2 times 180 is equal to 7 times 180 which is equal to 1260. Now let's think. If this has a total of 1080 degrees, each angle of a regular octagon, so each interior angle of a regular octagon has 1080 divided by 8 degrees, right? That makes sense because I take the total number of degrees for the whole thing and I divide it by the number of angles. 
Same goes for a nonagon. So when I divide the number of degrees in a nonagon, I'm going to get 1260 divided by 9 is equal to 140 degrees on each interior angle of a nonagon. All right. What about for this quadrilateral here? If I'm going to find the number of degrees inside the quadrilateral, well, I know quadrilateral n equals 4, so I have 4 minus 2 times 180. And as you do these formulas, you're really going to get good at it, and you're going to remember that a quadrilateral has 360 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, in this quadrilateral, what I have is the total number of degrees is 360. But I also know that the total of the angles is C plus 3C plus C plus 3C, which gives me 6, 7, 8C. Okay, so what I'm going to say is, I'm going to say 8C equals 360, okay, and I'm going to divide by 8 on both sides, and what I'm left with is C is equal to 45 degrees. Well, when I'm left with 45, 45, that means this one's going to be 45 degrees, and this one's going to be 45 degrees. And 3 times C is going to be 3 times 45, which gives me 120 plus 15, which would be 135. And this one is 135. Okay? Let's talk about exterior angles really quickly. Exterior angle theorem. The sum of the exterior angles of a polygon, doesn't matter what it is, is 360 degrees. Okay? So what this means is this. Exterior angles go around the outside. And so if I'm looking at a hexagon, what I'm going to have is something that looks like this. And the exterior angles are these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So I know that the total equals 360, and the number of angles is 6. So I have 360 over 6 is equal to 60 degrees at each one.